so good morning students today we will start unit number 4 electric drive so this unit as named multi quadrant dc drive so dc drive in the sense we have to control our dc motor speed by employing uh, dc controllable devices or dc power electronic devices which produce the dc power output either it is a rectifier or chopper so this unit basically belongs to a chopper controlled dc drive by employing the chopper we will control the armature voltage which is the dc voltage input to the armature winding by the chopper structure so by controlling the duty cycle we will control the speed of a dc motor so we will see how we will control the uh, the speed by controlling the duty cycle so this is the basic topic in which we will see review of motoring and generating modes of operation of a separately excited dc motor so we will see that how motoring and generating modes happens in case of a separately excited dc machine so first of all we see that this is a chopper structure having switch t which is a made up of transistor switch this is a prevailing diode and here is the dc motor load which is represented as rl e and this is the dc input to the armature so in the motoring mode of operation when when t which is the transistor switch is on then this mode is known as a powering interval why powering interval because input power is delivered to output and this mode belongs to t is equals to greater than equals to 0 less than t on so in this mode diode will be reversed bow off by the supply v so we will write the equation VA is equals to V. VA is equals to V because as this diode is reverse biased, so full DC voltage input is applied to output of a input of a DC motor. So VA is equals to V, which is equals to IA RA plus LA DA by DT plus E. This is the powering interval or motoring interval. And when the transistor switch is off, when this switch is off. then this diode free wheeling diode comes into action which will free wheel this load current again in the same direction so from t greater than equals to t on to t this known as a free wheeling interval in this diode is on so diode will be on so this output terminals are short circuited by this diode so v is equals to 0 if v is equals to 0 so we will write again the cable equation uh, in this rl load and now here alpha is equals to t on divided by t which is known as a duty cycle you already studied in case of a chopper so if we draw the waveform of uh, output voltage which is uh, as a input voltage to a dc motor so ia armature current armature voltage versus time so up to t on time the full input voltage v is applied to the output so v is equals to v up to the t on time and it will be uh, now zero in case of t of time or from t on to t it is a t of time so during this time period our transistor switch will be off so prevailing action will be happens so uh, and this is the waveform of the voltage output armature voltage and if you draw the armature current so uh, this is the rl type of load so inductor will be there so this uh, armature current will be linearly rising because inductor will be charging during powering interval so inductor will be charging so current will be linearly rising from some have some initial current ia1 to ia2 during the powering interval up to t on time and after after this inductor will be discharging through the free wheeling diode so this have a negative slope and linearly discharging will be there and again it will repeat it in the same manner for next cycle so if you want to find the average output voltage or input voltage to a armature terminal of a dc motor then we, we can write v a is equals to 1 upon t from 0 to t on v a d t so we want to find this instantaneous uh, voltage expressions uh, average voltage value then we will integrate it from 0 to t on and in this period our v a is equals to v this is the powering interval from 0 so v will be there and from t on to t of uh, it will be zero so we will uh, integrate from 0 to t on only so in this way we can find the average output voltage by integrating this expression and we know t1 upon t is the duty cycle so final average output voltage va will be alpha times of v 
and this expression will be same as the step down chopper expression and output voltage will always be less than the input voltage if you multiply it by a due to cycle which is always less than 1 so we the thing we have to remember in this uh, review uh, of motor generating mode is that from in both the intervals our output voltage will be positive one in first case v is equals to v and in second case v is equals to zero so our voltage is always positive as well as the current direction will remain same in the first mode operation and in case of second mode of operation in both the motor and generating modes uh, this uh, sorry uh, first of all we uh, are interested in the motor mode so our current will be same direction so this is the first quadrant operation in which voltage and currents are both are positive which is known as a motoring interval so we will draw a split torque characteristics so for dc separately excited motor e is equals to va minus ira this is the expression of uh, voltage uh, the dc motor break away expression and we know e proportional to phi omega m so k phi omega m will be there in place of e and va is equals to alpha b from above and this ia will be we can write because t proportional to phi ia and t is equals to k phi ia so from this expression ia will be t upon k phi we will put here and uh, by simplifying we will write omega m is equals to alpha b upon k phi and t upon k phi square ra so this is the expression of split torque characteristics in which we can see that this is the expression of a straight line having a slope negative slope and and some no load speed and so this characteristic can be drawn like this having negative slope straight line expression Omega m naught is known as a no load speed because if we put t is equals to 0, we will obtain the no load speed. So, by decreasing this duty cycle alpha, we, we can decrease the speed of a DC motor. So, this uh, alpha decreasing one from alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 1 will be higher than alpha 2, alpha 3. So, if we decrease the alpha, then the speed of the motor will be decreasing. And in the first quarter, uh, characteristics are there. So, this is a uh, uh, motoring mode of operation. Now we'll see the regenerative braking mode, uh, regenerative braking operation. So in this uh, structure, it is uh, just like a step up chopper. So in this case, uh, the switch will be placed uh, parallel structure, transistor switch, diode will be here, and RLE load again. So, but regenerative braking, uh, so this armature conduction will be reversed now. Armature conduction will be reversed, and uh, when transistor switch is on, on, then this output voltage will be zero from 0 to T on and uh, this is known as an energy storage interval. Why energy storage interval? This is because uh, when transistor switch will be on then uh, this motor, uh, inductor stores the energy through free willing path. And now when T, uh, T is equal to T of time then this is known as a uh, in this case transistor switch will be in off condition and now current will be flowing from this break MF, uh, this E will be act like, the, like a source of energy and it will supply the energy through this diode to a input side. So this is known as a regenerative braking because this output power will be delivered now to input power. So when uh, regenerative braking uh, braking happens when this braking will be higher than this input voltage. So V is equals to V in this interval because it output will be equal to input uh, diode, is, diode is will be in forward bias. And if now we will again interested in finding the average value. So average value can be calculated uh, from 0 to T on it will be 0 because it is short circuited by the transistor switch and from uh, T on to T off it will be V because uh, that will be forward bias and transistor switch will be in off condition. So we will again find the average value 1 upon T from T on to T now because here output voltage will be 0 so we will integrate from T on to T. So in this case also we will obtain the expression uh, because T minus T on upon T. So it is a, a T of upon T. So it will be behaving like a alpha V. Now for motor in the regenerative braking work as a generator because uh, here uh, this motor acts as a source of supply which will be generate power to input side. So now in the regenerative braking motor will be acting like a generator with the reversal of armature current. So this happens when P E greater than VA or E greater than alpha V. So now we will again write the uh, split torque characteristic expression. Uh, so in this expression, uh, if we put, put IA is equals to, uh, because E is equals to V minus IARA. But uh, as the motor behaving, behaving like a generator, so we will write e, e is equals to V plus IARA. Now we will put again value of E 
V is equals to alpha V, and this I A will be minus of T upon K phi. Why minus? Because armature current direction will be reversed. So we would put I A to be negative here, and this is the expression will be same as the speed flow characteristic having a negative slope. And uh, if we write the V A I A curve with the quadrants, then we will see that in first case. Our V A will be zero, and in this second case, V A is equal to V. So voltage will be always positive, but current direction will be reversed in the second mode of operation. So voltage will be positive here, and current direction will be reversed. So this is the second quadrant operation. But uh, as the DC drive will be working in the only one quadrant, so this is a first quadrant mode of operation. But uh, as the voltage will be positive, current will be negative, so we will draw it in the in the second quadrant. Now, speed flow characteristic will be same as in case of motoring operation. But slight difference is there, as the armature current uh, as the armature current will be negative one, so this characteristic will be extended up to negative region because uh, T will be torque will be negative in case of a regenerative braking because current direction will be reversed, so torque will be negative. So now this characteristic will be extended in the negative. Uh, for us, this negative side also. So uh, here, first quadrant operation is there. Second quadrant operation is there. So by controlling the alpha, we can control the speed of a DC motor. So in this case, we have studied both motoring and generating modes of operation of separately excited motor. Now in the upcoming lecture, we will see how two quadrant operation of a separately excited DC machine can be uh, there in case of a speed controlling action. Thank you.